This is the all-new Skoda Octavia. Excited? Maybe not. But the Octavia has always been a car that's been well respected by the motoring media and well liked by owners. But it's never really been a car that can turn heads. But this car does look a bit smarter than before. Gone are those slightly odd split headlights from the previous car. There it is. And the back looks sharper as well. This car's 18 inch wheels do give it a level of sophistication, but it's still a conservative design that hardly stands out when you see it on the street. In a world where people are moving away from hatchbacks and saloons into crossovers and SUVs, style could be an issue. But how much does that really matter if this new Octavia is still one of the greatest family cars around? Before we find out, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the Car Buyer YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so you never miss a video. Image is not the only issue for the Octavia, another is understanding its relative size and where exactly it sits in the Skoda range, as well as in the market as a whole. The Octavia was recently joined by the Scala, a car that now competes more directly with models like the Seat Leon and the Volkswagen Golf. The Scala is noticeably shorter than the Octavia but has an almost identical size cabin at the cost of some boot space. Above the Octavia is the Superb, which is slightly longer. It has a similar size boot but more cabin space, mainly for rear seat passengers. But the Octavia has long been seen as a more practical alternative to the Evergreen Golf despite the Skoda's generous proportions. The two cars share a platform and boast many of the same engines. They even cost roughly the same amount of money. And if you consider a car that conventionally sits in the class above, like the Peugeot 508 perhaps, you can see exactly why the Octavia is considered the big family hatchback. Few people will need a more expensive car than the Octavia when you look at the space and technology on offer. It's up here where you'll find most of the Octavia's tech. So this is the SEL first edition model. So you've got virtual cockpit dials, a 10 inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and SatNav. But our car has also got a head up display which works really well and means you don't have to take your eyes too far off the road if you want to see things like your speed. The issue of desirability is something that comes up once again. This car is certainly functional, but exciting it is not. But this is a problem that plagues cars like the latest Golf and the Seat Leon. Take a look inside the latest Audi A3 and that car just feels a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more high end. Taking a seat in the back highlights one of the Octavia's biggest strengths and that is that it's absolutely huge back here. It feels much more like a saloon than one of the hatchbacks on which this car is based. There's loads of knee room and loads of headroom. I'm six foot tall, so I've got loads of space to stretch out. It's almost as if I'm traveling in the back of a luxury limo. So as I mentioned when we did the comparisons with the other cars, the Octavia's boot is a real plus point. You've got 600 liters to play with back here, which is pretty much bigger than anything in this class and bigger than some stuff in the class above. You've got 600 litres as I say, so that's 219 litres more than a Golf and loads of really handy features like some tether points here, some storage on the side, a ski hatch and this car's got a spare wheel so you don't actually get any underfloor storage. So while the boot is big and there's plenty of space inside, I appreciate that neither of those things make the Octavia particularly exciting and unfortunately things don't improve hugely when you get behind the wheel. While this car is perfectly adept at long distances, it's not a particularly exciting car to drive. It is, however, smooth, comfortable, quiet and secure, which, let's face it, is likely to be more important to many family car buyers than how this car handles on the limit. There are two versions of the 2.0-litre diesel engine available, and this is the more powerful one. It returns 62.1 mpg with CO2 emissions of 119 grams per kilometre and can do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 8.7 seconds. A 113 brake horsepower version of the same engine is good for 65.5 mpg, 113 grams per kilometre and is around £2,000 less to buy. Alternatively, there are two petrol engines on offer. A 108 brake horsepower 1 litre claims official economy of 54.7 mpg with CO2 emissions of 117 grams per kilometre. It's capable of 0 to 62 miles an hour in 10.8 seconds. The other choice, a 1.5 litre petrol engine with 148 brake horsepower, is better suited to a car of this size, getting the Octavia from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 8.2 seconds. 
economy only slips to 50.7 mpg with CO2 emissions of 127 grams per kilometer. But like the more powerful diesel, it costs around £2,000 more. Plug-in hybrid and higher power VRS models are on the way, and there's a more practical estate model if you want even more space. Our car has the 2.0-litre turbo diesel engine with 148 brake horsepower mated to the VW Group's 7-speed DSG, and it is perfectly suited to long motorway journeys. There's enough power for overtaking and accelerating on slip roads, and the engine feels well within itself at a cruise. Which engine you go for will depend largely on the type of driving you do. If you end up in town most of the time and you do less than 12,000 miles a year, one of the petrols is probably a better bet. The ride is fantastic, the steering, it's a bit lifeless, and the gearbox, a touch lazy. But if you ever want the Octavia to be a bit more responsive, you just flip the car through to sport mode, where the car holds onto gears a bit longer and is less reluctant to change down. Whichever engine you go for, the Octavia is a comfortable, predictable car to drive. So there's loads to recommend about the Octavia, but what are its deal makers and deal breakers? The big 600 litre boot. There's very little at its price point that offers quite as much space per pound. It's the same story inside. This is a family car with a space of a luxury limo. As well as the usual petrol and diesel engines, there's a plug-in hybrid and punchy VRS model on the way. There's nothing sexy about this car. What it gains in practical touches, it loses when it comes to image and desirability. So there we have it, the new Skoda Octavia. While I might sound a little bit negative, what I've talked you through there is actually one of the greatest family cars money can buy. It's spacious, it's practical, it's got a lovely interior, loads of tech, it's comfortable, and moreover, it's great value against all of its competitors. It's also a car that demonstrates that very few of us buy a car solely with our heads. And if we did, it'd be pretty much the only car on the road. Truth is, this car is a little bit dull. Desirability is in the eye of the beholder, but that will be a big factor in deciding whether or not this car is on your shortlist. Ultimately, apart from the image, there's very little to criticize about this car. If you found this video useful, then why not watch our Peugeot 508 review and our Family Hatchbacks playlist. Thanks for watching.